John, before we get into this game, I want to ask you about the quarterback Jalen Hurts. A lot has been made, a lot has been talked about with him recently. We've talked to our all of our guests. We talked to Mike and BLG yesterday. We talked to Les Bowen on Tuesday about it. Uh, where are you on the quarterback? You think um, you know some of the commentary we've had here on the show makes makes sense? Do you think he's in a good spot? Do you have any concerns with what you've seen from him early in the year? Can he handle the Kellen Moore offense? Or am I overreacting? Uh, where are you on the quarterback right now? Well, I, I, I think there's a lot of concerns. But, yeah, I'm not at the point where some people have, and I'm not saying you, but some people have completely pulled the plug. He can't be this. He can't be that. Um, he's already been that. Uh, that's sort of what I default to. So if, if 2022 is the ceiling, that's fine. You just got to get closer to uh, the ceiling which they haven't been, um, and that's what they're trying to figure out. Uh, But they have to, you know, the one thing where I disagree with, I think, most Eagles fans, and maybe not, maybe, I think, I I think most realize that if you want to go to where you want to go, and let's be honest, this team wants to go to the Super Bowl, and certainly the fan base thinks they should go to the uh, Super Bowl, so it's it's counterintuitive to say run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. You got to be more well rounded. You got to be able to, you know, what if Joe Burrow gets hot on this, you know, weekend, this particular weekend? What if he's got his A level stuff, and all of a sudden Cincinnati's piling up points? You know, you got to be able to keep up with that. And they did it in week one. There was a lot of points scored in Brazil. And they were able to do it. So they're still able to do it. They still have AJ and Devontae. They're not going to most likely have Dallas Goddard, but they still have two of the best playmakers in the game. They should be able to do it. It shouldn't be this difficult. And they got to figure out why it's this difficult. Now, Jordan Mylotta not being there, and that's something I should have mentioned, did get a chance to catch up with Jordan. He's doing well. He's hoping to be back after the the four games he has to miss, but um, his absence is a big one, obviously. And then if you add Mekhi Becton, um, the Eagles were able to persevere against a very bad football team. Can they persevere without those two guys against a good team? Not a great team, but a good team. Um, That's going to be a a big impetus of this game, but um, the offense is, is, yeah, they got to, they got to figure it out because right now it looks, I'm not going to say bad because they have AJ and they're throwing the football down the field and it's a perfect throw. Choppy, I think it was, or or clunky. Yeah, it's very, it's very choppy. It's very clunky, whatever adjective you want to use. Um, and it shouldn't be with the talent that they have. John, you mentioned there was a couple concerns that you had um, with Jalen, uh, you know, and just I know this is just your opinion, not, not you being a reporter or anything, but what, what are those concerns uh, well, for the ball you? Is coming out of his hand, and why isn't the ball coming out of his hand? Um, is it because he doesn't trust what he sees? Is it because he's looking for the big play? He's pushing for the big play. He's ignoring the underneath stuff. Um, why, why is the ball not coming out of his hands? I always bring up that time to throw from next gen stats. He's near the bottom of the league. The only two quarterbacks behind him are true traditional play action quarterbacks that are supposed to be behind him because there are different styles of offense. They don't play that style of offense. Um, I, I go back to his super bowl season when he was a 2.78 and now he's back over three, 3.1. Um, and that might not seem like a lot, but that's an eternity in the NFL. And he's always, he's never going to be Tua, who gets the ball out quicker. Right. Than it's not his style. It's yeah, not his style. Not his yeah. style but um, he's got to be middle of the road. He's got to be, um, he's got to be closer to where he was in 2022. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. And I think that's what Kellen Moore should be working on. Doug Nussmeyer should be working. And I, I'm sure they are. 
Like what, why, why is the reason for that? Um, you know, we talk about Saquon Barkley in the passing game all the time. Well, he's not been relevant in the passing game because of what we talk about outside of the wheel route and the opener. We talked about all off season. This guy just doesn't throw the ball on running backs. He doesn't dump at all. Now, part of that I'm okay with because there are different styles and he's not the point guard type quarterback. Right. So I'm not expecting a Chuck Borman like level of dump offs, but you know, sometimes it's a good thing. And he, he just, uh, and they tried to get it to Saquon on a couple swing routes against the giants. Didn't go anywhere, but I'm I'm not even I'm not talking about design plays. I'm talking about progression football, like you said yesterday. That he he it's gotta get better. Gotta get better. True progression football. All right. Number one's not open. Number two, and even number three. Right. I'd love to get to number two. Um, and too often it's number one or bust yeah one bust and bail to the right that's what i say now like i said i don't profess to be a quarterback guru or an expert i can just call it from what i see you know and when i watched the tape i did watch a couple people do some tape breakdowns guys that i respect greg cosell was one of them um you know you do see it and now like i said i'm not a quarterback expert or a guru i can only analyze it from what i see now one thing you said there john i want to go to you said big plays and Part of me wonders if it's not all Jalen that wants the big plays because I listened to Nick the other day at the press conference. Um, I listened to you tell me about the organizational philosophies. Like Nick the other day mentioned when you were talking about sacks, he's like, well, yeah, for us it's it's big play, it's explosive plays, it's yeah. turnovers, and then it's sacks. That's the next <laughs> metric. And I'm like, boy, this team really loves explosive plays. And I, I get it. It's a good metric, and, and it does tilt the game. It tilts the scale in your favor, as you imp- as you say. It Im- improves your margin of error. Are they too infatuated with that? Like, is that why Jalen's always looking deep and not looking <laughs> underneath a little bit more or getting to some shorter throws? Like, is there too much of an infatuation with the big explosive plays instead of kind of letting them come naturally? Um. I wouldn't say a a fascination because, like, they're not the only team. I mean, everybody talks about explosive plays because there's the two stats that correlate to winning the most in the NFL are turnover ratio and explosive plays. Win them both, you're going to win the game. It's like 98%. Um, Really weird things have to happen if you win both of those categories and you don't win a football game. Um, so that's why everybody, not just the Eagles, that's why everybody's obsessed with explosive plays. Where I think the Eagles get mucked up is they had so much success with it. Same with Kansas City um, during the Tyree Kill era. Kansas City, people <laughs> seem to forget because they win in the end. They really struggled when teams started um, playing. All right, you know, we're going to play our safeties in the parking lot and you're going to have to take underneath. You're going to have to be patient. And there was like a half a season where they were, what's wrong with the Kansas city offense? What they really struggled because they had so much, they were so used to it and you're trying to press and all of a sudden teams are taking it away and you got to recorrelate your whole mindset and be patient and say, all right, we're going to dump it off. And they were able to do it, recover, and and change the way they play offense. The Eagles haven't been able to do it to this point. Um, now, when I say haven't, they're still successful. They're still a top 10 offense. But um, to where they want to be, they haven't recovered. And they haven't gotten patient enough. They haven't been disciplined enough. Because remember, the whole thought press process behind that from a defensive standpoint is, all right, we're going to make you go 15 plays and you're going to make a mistake that sets you back in that 15 plays. That's the whole mentality there. 
So where people get frustrated when the Eagles play that way defensively and somebody is patient and goes, and you have all the underneath completions and the 90% completion percentage, what you're, what you're counting on is the false start or the sack or the miss block that sets people back. Um, and it's tough to be disciplined. And right now I would say, yeah, the Eagles are not disciplined and they're too often pushing for big plays. And I think it has not that they're obsessed with it, but they had so much success getting them. They, they think it should be easier to get them. Got it. I I do think there's, there's something there and we'll continue to monitor it. I know the Eagles like that. And, uh, just trying to diagnose here where, where you are on Jalen Hurts and, and create some conversation about the quarterback. I, I Overall, I you know, I feel okay about Jalen. I feel like we can still win with him in a big way. Uh, but as you point out, it, it does look clunky uh, so far. Last question on Jalen Hurts. Any issue, and, and I know I guess we won't know the exact nature of this or the exact percentage of this, any issue with how much he's changing the plays at the line of scrimmage uh, in your opinion, I, and just for context, I watched um, the show, I watched the show, the quarterback show. You, you, did you watch that on Netflix? I never watched it when it came out. Yeah, I did, and I watched it, and I'm and I'm watching Indeed. Kirk Cousins, and I'm. It's, I know it's not a perfect comparison, but the reason I thought about this was Kevin O'Connell like doesn't expect Kirk Cousins to change that line of scrimmage, and like when he did, Kevin's like, "Yo, dude, did you call that up by yourself? Like, why did you call that? I could have gotten you into a better formation, a better play there." And I was I was taken aback because I'm like, hmm, I thought Kirk would be one of those quarterbacks that had autonomy at the line. He does a little bit. Not and then this was when he was with Vikings, but with Kevin O'Connell. But you know, you think Jalen's calling too much at the line of scrimmage? Any issue with that, or are you good with that? Well, there's there's a there's a lot of difference. Like what you just said about Kevin O'Connell, I don't like it about young coaches um, because they think they. <laughs> They know better than the guy playing the game. Now you get to the point, you get a player like that. You should, that's, I always say, and I not Kirk to a certain extent, but you know, obvious, the obvious ones, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, that's what you should be striving for as a coach. And if you're not striving, this is my biggest criticism of Chip Kelly when he came in. He didn't want a quarterback like that. He wanted a guy to just run what he called and do what he wanted. And I'm like, that's ego. That's, you know, I mean, if you don't want Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, get the fuck out. Right. Uh, I don't want you as my coach, but, um, and a lot of young coaches, I would say more young coaches are like that closer to chip than, you know, having the egoless sort of, ability to say wow i'm lucky i found a quarterback that can do this i'm going to utilize it to the best of my ability so to that aside obviously jalen's not at that level um and most quarterbacks aren't the vast majority but i would say that you know most modern offenses are built in with you know run pass pass run and you call one so every play call has a a run uh, embedded in it or a pass. And you basically kill from one to the other. So, you know, that's generally how it happens. Um, You're, you're just killing from one play to another. Um, Nobody's making these wild changes. um, That's not built into the play, which is part of the ugliness of modern football in my estimation but so is he doing it too much i don't know it's all about and again i go back to tom too much because tom's tom who else are you going to go to yeah right and if people have a problem with that he said and he he gave the best example of play calling the best explanation of play count calling i think i've ever heard from anybody and that's his you're you're just calling probabilities so on third and long you think they're going to be in this defense. Right. Because like you walk up the line and you're like, boy, if they're in man coverage, I'm going to be in a good spot right here with this. Yeah. Play. So the probabilities, this is how they play third and long, the vast majority. You're calling the probability. You're counting cards, however you want to describe it. And then if they come out in something else, 
you got to be savvy enough to get your team in the better position. So in the case of Tom had a much wider menu, um, Peyton, Aaron Rodgers, people like that, then young quarterbacks who basically have the two options. Um, so is he doing it too much? Well, depends on your definition. When he, when he does it on fourth and three to AJ and drops it in the bucket, everybody's happy. All right. Why shouldn't they be? Is it a good decision? Eh, probably not. Probably not. Low, Low percentage, percentage play. play. Yeah. Going. Low percentage play. Is it a good? So from a coach's standpoint, and this is why people don't understand pro football focus from a coach's standpoint, you might get a little bit of a downgrade on a, on a play like that. Cause you didn't make the right decision. Um, and, you know, people can't wrap their heads around, a lot of people. Um, so generally, again, how, how many times have I said people don't judge play calls, they judge play results? Well, people certainly don't judge audibles. They judge audible results. And does he do it too much? Probably. Probably. No issue with it though, because you're as you mentioned earlier, you know, you're no, because to... I think he's been craving it and he's finally right. got it. And there's the human nature of what I finally got it, I'm gonna use it. And I think you're um, right about like it's a better it's a it's a better approach than a Chip Kelly approach where it's yeah. just do what I do what I call and that's it. So I guess it's the climb to get to and 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 again, you know, it's not about getting to ten and one, it's about getting to the playoffs and making a run in the playoffs. So if you have some growing pains along the way and he's really cooking at the end of the season and he learned from some of the mistakes, it's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, no, I, I would argue that's the best case scenario. I mean, that's what you want. You want to climb. You want to you want to get to the end and, and be your best version of your football team, which is hard to do in the NFL. Uh, Johnny Mac, great segment there on Jalen Hurts and the updates uh, from yesterday. Appreciate everybody in the chat uh, right now. Had one super chat we'll get to from General JD. General, thank you, brother. He says, J Mac, what do you see happening with Bradbury? Thank oh, you for the $2 boy. super chat. Johnny Mac, your response. Whew, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> I don't see him playing here. Uh, I'll say that. So, um, barring a bunch of injuries, which uh, probably isn't going to happen before November 4th. I uh, saw him the other day, last week in the locker room. Seems fine. Called himself day to day. You know, right now he's acting like somewhat of a player coach to the younger uh, defensive backs. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where I think he's going to sit the whole year and get paid and go find a, uh, another opportunity after the season. But, um, you know, it's going to be hard to trade him from the standpoint of, well, people think he's on injured reserve. They haven't started his practice window. But if you start his practice window, as I just explained with um, Anaya Smith, then you have a deadline to where you got you got 21 days to either put him up or, or shut him down. So, yeah, how he probably should have moved on from that one. Um, but, you know, he is a professional, tremendous guy. He's not creating any waves. Uh, you're not going to get much value for him on the trade market. Um, so if I were a betting man, I, and, and bet us had those odds, which they probably don't, but I would say he's going to set the whole season and move on after the season. I'll do it for Bradbury here. We'll see what ends up happening there. General, thank you for the super chat, my man. We'll take any super chats here. Uh, opened up hour number one. We're going to talk to Caden Steele in hour number two uh, about the Eagles Bengals, and we're going to dive into that game next on Birds 365 after the commercial break. Thanks, everybody, uh, for tuning in this morning. Got a great crowd in here, as always. Dank Bird Gang, what's up, brother? Jose, Abe, Jay Perfect, Cali Baby, good to see you, Cali. Brian Fleming, Daz is in here. Dominique Dabney, good to see everybody. Uh, hit that like button if you're enjoying the show. We appreciate uh, appreciate it. We'll get to our commercial break, and then we'll dive into Eagles Bengals. The four and two birds taking on the three and four Bengals. But Joe Burrow, 
Anytime you play Joe Burrow, you got to watch out. Yeah, he's, that, that's a good quarterback. So we'll talk about that next. Before I get to our break, let me tell you about our great friends at BetUS. You can see I just threw the, the graphic on the screen. It's YouTube 150 is the promo code. You can see that on the right side of the screen there. Uh, you get 150% sign-up bonus on your very first deposit, and then you get 125% on your second and third deposits all up to $2,000. So deposit less. And bet with more at BetUS. Go to BetUS.com.pa. That's BetUS.com.pa. They have the fastest payouts in the industry. 24-7 customer support. And they'll even give you your own custom account manager. So go check out BetUS.com.pa. Big thanks to them for sponsoring Birds 365. We'll be back in three minutes, everybody, uh, with Eagles Bengals preview coming up next. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.